So welcome to another uh, board game preview video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're joined by... Russ. And I'm Jordan. So uh, today we played Weimar uh, from Capstone Games. Uh, it is a big four-player Euro-style game. Uh, and I want to insert, it's Weimar the Fight for Democracy, because there's another Weimar from a different company. That so, I think it's called Weimar Republic. It might be, yes. But so yes. this is the fight for democracy. Yes, like London buses, you get two at a time, and you never see another one for another 40 years. There you go. So this is the one from Capstone Games. This is very much a Euro-style game. Uh, it plays four players. I don't think you can play it with less, um, I believe. And I say that because this is a prototype, and that's what the rules game is. <laughs> Sure, uh, yeah. So, this is pre-production. Uh, there weren't any rules for any less players than that. It might be a four-player only, because it is very much uh, a game where you are debating between these four factions that form the Weimar government, lots of back and forth between everyone, uh, with different issues and vying for control of the cities and the government itself. Uh, as such, we have Russ from uh, Cardboard Conflicts with us and his friend Jordan, they drove up to join us to play, so we're very appreciative of you having done that for us to be able to kind of get this in. Now, the game itself, designed by, uh, uh, okay. Matthias Kramer. Kramer. Sure, it's Matthias Kramer, but... Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 out of Germany, and so this was a very interesting game and not something that's usually in our wheelhouse, is what I would say. We do a lot of war games, however, this is very much a historically, politically... Mm -hmm. And conflict-focused game as well. And it shares a lot of similarities with some of the war games that we play. Yes. C cards, card-driven, the back and forth. I mean, that that is kind of what this game is about. It's done a little differently. Yes. But it does share some similarities. Yeah, there were things in here that felt very familiar. Mm -hmm. With um, that, There is an opinion track with opinions that you put out. Very Churchill-esque. Issues. Right? Opinions. Yep. Where you'll playing to move them towards you and you're going to resolve them if they get there it, it functions a little bit differently but that feels very familiar mm -hmm. um, there's kind of this faux map of germany with all the different cities and that has kind of elements of area control in it putting your units out fighting in the streets trying to set up um, regimes or uh, communist councils but you also have to have bases to allow you to do that and then you know the bases there might have other knock-on effects later on in the game as well but then on top of that, there's, you know, some pretty crunchy Euro game stuff here. You're trying to Very accrue Euro, yeah. uh, victory points, um, and you're going to do that uh, individually and uniquely with all the different factions here for certain game states and things like that. And then and then you also have, like, a card deck of the cards. Like you said, it's a little bit of a CDG, and some cards will get added depending on which of your political agendas you're playing under as well. So there is a lot of moving parts to this game. Uh, and not necessarily what you would call a war game. So it was kind of refreshing to play something that's outside of my wheelhouse, generally, is what I would say. Uh, and it's a fairly long game and a fairly mm -hmm. involved game. That being said, uh, we didn't have them. Again, a scenarios. prototype copy. There are shorter scenarios that I believe are a much shorter, little kind of focused uh, kind of snippets of the game to focus on the early part of the Republic or the late part or, or the middle part as well. So I think there's going to be options in there as well. And, and the game's very long. It says on the box 360 minutes, which is six hours. Yeah, right? which is an hour a turn. It's basically an hour a turn. Part of that is you're each playing five to six cards. Mm -hmm. I think if you win the uh, reparations, you get an extra card, so that player has six. But a big part of it is the administration at the end of the, end of the round where you go through different aspects, scoring points, adding guys, taking guys away, you know, doing all of those things, resolving issues, and it it, it takes time to get through those. Yes. You made a comment during the game, you were like, well, I didn't think that was as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, so, because this game has a lot of pieces, and you've got all these really nice big player boards, and all these cards, and all the bits, it took up my whole table, and we were still crushed for space. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big game. But, you know, if you think about something like um, Churchill or Versailles or even Pericles, there's like all these different phases to the game. And it's, you know, we do all of our card play back and forth. That takes a while. Then you resolve all the issues. 
Then you resolve this society track, which has all these moving parts that you've affected during play. Then you score all of the the kind of points. Then you do all this other extra admin based on any changes that have been made. So it's it's a lot of uh, regimented stuff that happens in this particular order, and you know you just follow the rule book doing that. There were no play aids in this prototype. I presume there will be play aids. They I would have helped, I think. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I would hope that those yeah. those yeah. Would lots be in of there. symbology. Yes. So it would have. We we figured it out after a round or so, but it would have been nice to have a nice play aid to explain all those symbols and how those things worked. And and the final game will have that. But yeah, but because we've got experience with things like Churchill and Pericles, where it's like do all of this and then resolve all these things. I, I was I was like okay. Once we did it a couple of turns, I was like, all right. It, it was it was less um, work than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't yeah. terrible, so that was you know something that I was like, oh, I was kind of happy about. It that. was actually kind of entertaining. I, I remember sitting there thinking, oh, I'm now understanding better how Russ, with the KPD, was trying to to win and score. Mm -hmm. The same with I, I just felt like that was interesting and. That's why I think this game is very deep, and you're going to have to play this multiple times to really oh, even, yeah. even start to kind of scratch the surface and understand really what you're supposed to be doing. I think we all ask the question almost every mm -hmm. round, how am I going to win? Yeah, yeah. yeah how am I supposed yeah. to win this? How? What am I supposed to do? And to me, that's what I want a game to do. I, yeah. I want it to make me think. I also want it to make me adjust. Because, you, you know, Russ, for, for instance, you had a couple of auto-victory as did you, yes. right, with the socialist. It it was, you could win this way, yep. but you're also working to win another way. I, I thought that was interesting because mm -hmm. we were fighting against each other, trying to stop each other from doing that. And then you just have to pivot. And, and I think that's cool. You have to be nimble on your feet, I guess, is what I'm driving out at. Yeah, it was interesting because not only do you have victory conditions, you're trying to win, you also have to prevent other people winning as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just a straight race to points, which is something that I don't necessarily like in Euro games. I think that's just kind of like dry and a little bit boring. Whereas this one is, yeah, I got to do my own thing, but I do also have to worry about, yeah, and I have means to an extent to prevent you from winning as well. And so that's always something interesting. So let's throw it over to Russ and Jordan. What do you guys think? I really love this game. I think it's got a lot of a lot of meat there, um, a lot of different changing of strategies. With kind of your agendas, you pick an agenda at the start of your turn. Those were really cool. And, and Very. Thought, oh, yeah. It, it, it's going to put out what issues, dictate what issues you have. You might add like a separate deck into your mm -hmm. your deck that's going to give you different actions. So it's really going to change up kind of what am I going to be doing? Um, I never felt like I didn't have anything to do after my turn. I was always looking at my cards, figuring it out, seeing what you guys were doing, what I had to react to. Um, and very engaging. Uh, I think the theme uh, really kind of kept my attention. So mm -hmm. I really, I think there's definitely a lot of game here. A lot of good good things to like, for sure. Oh, yeah. And even to add to these, uh, what are they, agenda cards? Agenda cards. cards. Yeah. Um, I think in like a longevity sort of sense, if you play this a lot, mm -hmm. if someone picks a certain agenda card, they're shuffling in particular cards, there's things they want to do. I think you could really kind of analyze that and think, oh, I might expect this from them. How do I respond to that? Mm -hmm. So I think, like you said, there's just a lot of meat to this. A lot of pieces, too. It is all a beautiful game. It oh, yeah. pops out yeah. a lot. Um, all the big wooden bits, colors, all that. Um, I really like the card play in this. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It is your typical CDG fashion. You know, you have your events, your ops points, but there's another layer to it where... You have like these sub op points that you can use for the debates where it's like, oh, well, you know, it gives me these points I can use for actions out in the cities, but I could use these two different numbers and just really kind of take these issues home. And I really like that decision space with it. too. Yeah. Well, and those issues, I think they're very, very important. Mm -hmm. I know I felt like my guy, my, my faction needed to fight over those because I was trying to maintain somewhat of a majority in the Senate because there's some auto victory conditions yeah. for, for others. And going after those two, it gives you the benefit of those seats. A so absolutely. It yeah. Just supported it too. I, I also like with the agenda cards that one of the weaknesses I think in a lot of Euro style games is it's rinse and repeat. <laughs> yes. I, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I'm going to score my points. And then next turn I'm going to do the same thing. Mm. You cannot do that. 
in in this game, especially with all the reactions. Yes, there's yep. so many. Because there are, if you control in these areas, the area control is really more of an area presence. Yes, right. You can react to someone else's card play <clears throat> if you share the same space with them, but you also have to have the reaction cards, right? Weren't they the leaders basically? So those those were like regular reactions, but if you had points yeah, in reserve, you, you could pay you them. Could, you could yes. pop your fight reaction too. So it was yeah, and like yeah, they're... like a lot of Euro games, you know, it's there's there's always lots of things, lots of options. <laughs> yeah. It's not just yeah. oh, you know, I can play a reaction card. Cool, you can do that if you've got a reaction card mm-hmm. in your hand, or if you have a base, you can spend one reserve point that you have to put in there to do this other reaction on my board. So there's lot, you know, there's lots of different bits and pieces you kind of have to keep a track of. That's that's another thing, too. I don't know if we mentioned it, is these reserve points. Mm-hmm. How you can kind of bank your ops points to use them later for just a big explosive turn, or yeah. you could even bluff out a reaction with it. Like, if, you know, you're sitting on zero points, I feel a little safe. You can't but do anything, if, right? if Russ is sitting with one, he might react to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what I mean by... you. A lot of a lot of the the euros that we've played, yep. and probably you guys, you kind of just it doesn't really even matter what everybody else is doing. Yeah, you're, just... you're going out and doing your thing, man. In this one, there's a lot of interaction, the reactions, you know, the issues. It's just you got to keep fighting. Mm-hmm. And it, I also like how it's going to change from turn to turn with those agenda cards. You're going to get different uh, items out on the board. You're going to have different goals. And the other really cool thing that it's hard to explain without really showing it is... And I'll show you here in a bit as well. The economic side of this game, I think, is just so fascinating. The the concept of if people are hungry and they don't have jobs and money, that's when your two factions really, you know, workers rise up and and fight against the, the government and... But then we're trying to improve the economy yeah. so that you guys can't do that as much. And we're trying to keep the economy strangled yeah. so that the people are angry yes. and yes. that they stay away from the moderates. It, we're trying to maintain the government's impotence, which is a fascinating it, It's yeah. piece. such a cool balance. And I, I was skeptical how that would play out at the beginning because I, I know a little bit about the Weimar Republic. But man, it, it yeah. actually plays out very well. Now, historically accurate, I, I, I don't know. But I could feel that tension of trying to build this, stop you, you guys trying to stop us. Very cool concepts. And and even the concept of trying to remove these negative from the Deutsches Reich, trying to get them away, these issues that are going to lose the game for us yes. or, or turn things into chaos. Also a very fascinating thing. How do I do that? I, I got to do this and I got to do that. And, oh, guess what? That doesn't happen until the end of the round. And it's a die roll sometimes, right? Sometimes it's placing prosperity out, yes. hoping, oh, I'm going to roll Leipzig so I can put it up here. Because or, yeah, Leipzig because already, already has one. Yes. I, just very fascinating. I thought the economic side of that was very mm-hmm. cool. I, I did think one of the things that we didn't play very well and will probably play better the next time are these minor parties. That They really had a big yeah. benefit. I could have taken your minor party a couple of times, and I mm-hmm. thought to myself... I probably should have done that because yeah, it gives you seats in the Reichstag and I, there's and just some interesting things. The abilities too, like the one I had, yeah. which I'm shameful to admit I only used it one time, yeah. but it lets me just re-roll anyone's die roll yeah. at once around. Yeah. Crazy. But really cool. I also yeah. had one of those when I became the Reich the president. president yeah. That was a really cool ability, but I, I'm not sure we fought over those very no. much. Mm-mm. I don't, I don't think any of these came out, but yeah. I know I had cards that could. And yeah. Yeah. Looking back, I kind of wish I yeah. would have seen that. I think early on I could have done a little more damage had I been able to get that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, it, interesting, because now we're, we would play again, and it's going to be oh, a yeah. totally different oh, yeah. experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I will do is I will show you vaguely <laughs> how this works. I don't have an hour because uh, there's a <laughs> lot of moving parts, but I'll show you how it works, and then we'll wrap up the few final thoughts. Okay. So here's a look at the board, and as you can see, it's a Euro game. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it, there's just a lot here, so let me just clean up some of the rule books and stuff. Again, to note, this is a prototype. It's a very nice prototype, but a prototype nonetheless. This is a pre-production copy, so there are things on here that you'll see that are not final. There are things that are final, or are pretty much final, um, things you can look forward to, but for reference, we played the rules off of this PDF. 
which was, you know, <laughs> lacked a lot of, uh, of the examples of the cards and things. So most of the rules we were able to garner from these, there were a couple things in the rules that were a little bit unclear. Hopefully those are tidied up. Um, the things that uh, were maybe could have done with a little bit more clearness was specifically uh, what happens if there's extra of these Deutsches Reich threats beyond the six. Uh, that was, I don't, that wasn't particularly called out. There was some other thing that it was like, uh, I wish it had, oh, right here, just there wasn't any particular clarification about if, if the economy is doing really well, is that you can have a maximum of two Reich uh, markers for the uh, nationalists and two uh, council markers for the KDP. We played it that way. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And if the economy is booming, that you can't put any of those out. But uh, I wasn't really sure what that was, so we kind of just adjudicated it uh, on the fly. But, you know, again, this prototype, those things will be ironed out, hopefully, uh, before the final thing is. But as you can see, a lot of pieces coming out on the board. Uh, there's a lot of stuff off map as well. This takes up my whole table, because each player also has a faction board, uh, where there's a space for your draw deck, discard pile, um, your current agenda that you've got going, and any additional minor parties uh, that you uh, might be controlling. And this tells you all of your actions that you've got on it as well. There's also a reverse side, uh, if you are so inclined to do that one. But that's, that's kind of... <laughs> so, big game. Now, there's a lot of different cards in here, uh, and a lot of different moving pieces. So I can't go through all of them, it would take me an hour. Uh, and if this is on Kickstarter, they've got good uh, stuff explaining all that stuff anyway. But basically a turn is you're going to be dealt a couple of these timeline cards. And the timeline cards are, it's a deck that's built and um, destroyed based on this turn track. And there's these yellow, orange and brown sections that's going to add cards and remove certain cards. But you're going to get uh, two of these. Uh, and this is what all of the cards generally look like. Uh, they're going to have an ops value on them, or they have some event that they can use, which usually has a couple line items or an at or an or choice on them. So you're going to get two of those. Everyone's going to get two. And then you look at those, and you're going to choose from your particular faction uh, which agenda that you're going to kind of uh, go for this turn. So you have these four agenda cards. These are the nationalist ones. Uh, and you can freely choose which one of these you want to do. Um, everyone has two agendas that add uh, another subset of cards to their national uh, or their political party's uh, card deck, and then also does some extra bits and pieces. And then they also have two which don't add any cards but have a lot of potentially very strong abilities on them. So these are really going to set the tone for what you're trying to do this turn. Um, and, and it can be very powerful to aid you in those aims. So you're going to choose one of those. And again, you get to look at your two um, timeline cards and you're like, oh, uh, this might help me with some economy stuff. Or this might help me to add uh, poverty out and get my guys out. So I might say, okay, how can I capitalize on the poverty that's out there? Oh, well, I can put this stuff out that might capitalize on it. Things like that. Once you've chosen your agenda, everyone's going to kind of do simultaneously, you then all reveal them. Let's say the Nationalists chose this uh, coup uh, one. They have their deck of regular cards. And all of these, again, uh, it's uh, they have an ops value and they have uh, some events that they could use, right? That's generally speaking what they are. There's some reaction cards which are politicians, but most of them uh, are in the same format as the timeline cards. So we revealed this, we're going to add our little coup deck to our main deck. And when you do that, you also shuffle in your um, national party uh, discard pile if you happen to have one. In this instance, we'll just say that we don't. So there's this little separate deck of five cards. They each have this C at the top, which corresponds to these coup deck that we add. So these cards now get shuffled into my regular deck of cards. And it gives you a little indication here. It says that uh, these cards, uh, they emphasize coups and paramilitary stuff, which is um, using your units to try and put out these regime markers in areas and affect um, kind of ground control of the board 
as well. Uh, and it'll also help you to take control of German kind of uh, German army units. These German army units are controlled by the government on their white side, that uh, it can help you to take control of them uh, and kind of infest them with, uh, with their uh, nationalist ideas so that they come over to your side and fight for you. Which can be very, very interesting uh, and can <laughs> really severely change things. So having added those cards in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw three. So I've got three of these plus my two timeline cards you have a hand of five cards. Most turns, you're gonna have a hand of five cards to play with. After we've done that, we're then going to, um, we could move one, uh, it's got a little uh, kind of a cylinder here. That's one of these base markers. Um, you could move one. So we could say, oh, we've got three in Cologne, we don't need that. Uh, we're gonna move one over to Breslau. So we've got a presence there. And then I'm gonna search your draw pile uh, for a reinforcement card, uh, take it to your hand and shuffle afterwards. You draw one less card this round. So you would do that and I would have drawn one fewer card. So you resolve all this agenda, then you draw your cards. I just did it in the wrong order, but that's okay. So then I've got my, uh, my kind of five card hand and everyone else is going to have done that. And then starting with the, uh, the Reich Chancellor, uh, the, the Chancellor, he's going to choose um, who goes first. Uh, and so they'll choose someone to go first and they're gonna play a card. And then you go through this card play phase, everyone's gonna play all of their cards, you can't pass. And so I'm gonna play this card. You can either play it for the art, for the event down here, in which case you would add your nationalist, the poor token, uh, which well, we don't have out. Let me see if I can't fish that out here. I've got soldiers, farmers. Well, I don't have it, but uh, it looks like this. Uh, but it says, it says the poor on it. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, here it is. It was underneath this. So, it says we add the, the poor uh, nationalist tile to the board. So it, everything gets added to this row first, and it goes on here for our society, and it's going to boot out this one, so they all move down. So it does that, and then uh, if this particular agenda uh, is or well, this particular opinion is on, uh, is on the opinion track, you advance it four towards you. And so this is this big opinion track. Uh, if this happened to be on here, on the zero space, uh, and there's a little holding box for the zero because you have a bunch in there. One, two, three, four moves at four to us. Great, that's the card play, if you play for the event. If you play for the ops, uh, I've got five ops, so I'm gonna pick one city and I can do five actions in that city. You can't do two over here and three over here. You do them all in one city. Uh, the actions, which are all described on your player board and have their costs on them, things like mobilizing, moving troops there, um, or performing a coup costs four of your five actions. Uh, doing a demonstration, which you can only do once per card, uh, costs you one of your actions, but you can spend another two to enhance it, for example or I could spend two to take control, which was uh, that whole thing where I flip this over to, to my side. You can do all of these different things up to five, basically. So uh, what that might look like is you might mobilize some people. Uh, let's say you had uh, a couple of troops in your supply. Uh, you're gonna say, oh, I'd like to do my stuff down here in Cologne. Uh, let's get rid of that for, for this example. So I'm gonna spend one to mobilize, that costs me one of my five points. The other four I'm gonna spend on performing a coup because I would desperately uh, like to um, put out a regime marker. Uh, if the nationalists put out three regimes, they win. If the communists put out three councils, they win. Uh, everyone else, including the two extremist parties, have to win uh, otherwise, by accruing victory points, which are kept hidden face down, uh, at the end of six turns you score it if you haven't won through some of the sudden death stuff. So I'd like to try and put that out, so I'm going to just roll for a coup. You roll one die per uh, black unit that you have, one, two, three, and you would subtract one of these die for every opposition uh, ground force that was there. But we don't have any because we're very lucky. Uh, there would be plus one die if there was an unrest in this space. So let's just say there was one unrest. We're gonna roll that. So we're gonna roll these dice. 
and I rolled. So you pick the single highest die, I rolled a five, and that's what we get. So I consult my little table here, a four through a five puts an unrest marker out. While there's already one, can't put another one, so nothing happens there, unfortunately. If I'd have rolled a six, uh, and you can get, again, modifiers to that, then I could have placed a regime marker out, which would have been very nice. Uh, but also, it creates some uh, instability uh, on a national level. So then we're going to place out our little instable state marker into this kind of uh, the Deutsches Reich track, this national track that is just national crises. And if this fills up uh, and is that way at the end of uh, a turn, the country descends into anarchy. It can be very bad and everyone uh, loses. Uh, well, the government definitely loses usually. So you could spend actions doing these kind of military things like that. Uh, or instead of having done that, um, if we'd done none of those and we'd done none of this, you can spend your card to debate issues. Um, typically speaking, with the agenda cards that everyone's put out, there will be a bunch of issues here. Um, there's ec economic issues, there's poverty law issues, media issues, foreign affairs, um, you can, there's a reparations issue, all sorts of things. Uh, control of these minor parties, but those are usually put out by your agendas. You just have to be that that nationalist agenda didn't put any out. But for example, uh, the loyalty to Moscow uh, agenda from the KDP, you can put any uh, one issue onto the zero space. So that's why it's kind of there in that big exploded zero space. So that's how those are going to come out through your agenda play, typically speaking. Uh, so if I want to debate issues, you use both these values. So there's this big value, this five. There's also a smaller value off to the side. When you debate, you can move two issues on the opinion track. One of them you can move five spaces. The other one you can move one space. You cannot divide or move anything uh, mixing or matching those numbers. So I'm going to move this one space because I really want to win this. And I'm going to move one of these other issues five spaces. And I want to win control of this minor party. One, two, three, four, five. That's how you would debate. Um, real, real simple if you're doing it that way. What is very interesting is that there are cards which you're like, oh, this is, if you're going to debate with it, this is, you know, I've got one action, which is kind of useless, or I can debate one and I can debate another two. So sometimes the, the, uh, the different action numbers on the cards will inform you that, hey, this is good for this. This card that's a 3-3, three, three, you can move two issues, three spaces. That's very good. Um, so sometimes your hand will um, kind of lead you in a, in a good direction to kind of win things. So everyone's going to play all their cards. All these issues are going to get spread around. Um, this little opinion track reminds me a little bit of Churchill. That's why we kind of talked about that. But it's awesome because you have these uh, kind of cross pieces here and all this space in between that you can move. And that's because... Uh, between us, we can pull them this way instead of going all the way back and up like you would in other games. And why that's important is because if you land on one of these middle spaces that has both blue and black or blue and red, um, the, the Rice Chancellor, he decides who gets it. He breaks all ties and so he says, uh, this goes to the blue player or uh, this one goes to the black player. And, and so depending on all the wheeling and dealing and negotiation, who's forming the government at the time, um, they're going to be able to influence those things for their better, basically. It's a really neat aspect of the game that you can notice there's, there's no such track between uh, the far left and the far right factions. I, I thought that was really neat. So, moving all these around, adjudicating all of this stuff. So everyone's played all their cards. You're going to have all these coup attempts, all these fights that are going on, all sorts of things going on, all these debates happening. And then at the end of the round, you have this political phase where you kind of resolve all of this. And everything that is on a zero space just kind of goes back where it is. Those don't get resolved. Uh, whoever's got the most issues or opinions on their side gets three seats in the government. So let's say the nationalists had three seats. That's not good. We don't want that to happen. That's very bad. But let's say that it happens. They're going to get these three seats in the government. Uh, and we're going to put those right here. We'll stick one in here and put the other two here. 
the person who has the second most gets only one. And in a tie, the Reich Chancellor, and we'll say, the SPD is the Reich Chancellor to start the game typically, uh, so they're going to break the tie in their favor, so they're going to get one extra kind of seat in the game, kind of influence on having done well. And second and third, or oh, third and fourth place get nothing. Now that that's been adjudicated, you then go uh, top left, going down the rows like this, from left to right, um, and you resolve those issues. So the first one to get resolved is an economic issue. So the red player resolves the economic issue that they won on their track. Uh, the economic issue is going to move this economy marker up. That's very good. Uh, the moderate factions want to get it up here to stabilize the country and the economy. Uh, or uh, if, if the extremist factions get it, you know, they're going to... Um, they're going to not do that, they're going to prevent it going up, and they're going to use that economy boon to build bases. And bases are just these little guys out on the board that give you a little bit of influence and allow you to participate in this particular city. It's really like setting up a local office of your um, nationalist party, basically. That's the economic issue done. So then we go to the media issue over here. So the media issue was won by the blue player. Uh, and the media issue allows you to place a white tile, I believe. Let me just double check <laughs> before I mislead you. Media, yes. So the blue player is gonna take one of their blue society markers and they're gonna stick it on here. And it's a way to bump this nationalist one off, so that's good for them, but also to give themselves a bonus. Uh, so they're gonna do this one. They're gonna put the citizens on there. It's gonna kick this out. So when this resolves here in a little bit, the Nationalists won't get their little soldier's ability. Uh, then we've got uh, this one down here, the Dusch, Dusch, Luch, I believe is what it was. Oh, the Dolchstoss. Uh, so this gives uh, a seat in Parliament to the Nationalists and two bases. Uh, so they're going to put out two bases. I tried to do that a lot, so I get lots of bases out, basically. So it can be very strong, so put a couple of bases out. Um, then we've got the USDP, so whoever won the USDP gets control of the USDP faction. So the USDP faction uh, goes over here, and they, they, they're going to change hands. Uh, so, and those, give, those minor factions give you, um, they give you political more seats, uh, basically, because you've made a little coalition with these minor factions. Uh, and then the last one is this foreign affairs. Uh, you can place a flag out here of any of these three nations you wish, and then uh, I think you can then attempt to roll on the foreign affairs table. And the foreign affairs table has a lot of bad things and a lot of good things. You can get victory points there, but it can be very, very swingy. Uh, you have to roll a die. Some things will happen, like the bad things always happen, but if you roll well, some good things might happen too. So it's, it's kind of a, a very risk. Uh, intensive uh, to, to do that. But if you don't do any of these, um, they, there are events that can really stymie stuff. So if you never sign the Treaty of Versailles, which you don't have to do, or you might fail to do if you don't roll well, um, if you don't sign the Treaty of Versailles, they continue to blockade you post-World War I, and it crushes your economy. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, so that's, you then resolve all the issues. Then you kind of go down here and you resolve all of these rows of things. This row, this row, and this row. So you're going to resolve all the society. So the blue player gets a blue guy in Parliament. Done. Then the black player gets to place an unrest marker wherever they wish. Ooh, where do we want to put it? We're going to put it down in Stuttgart, because that's going to help us to do uh, demonstrations and a coup there to place a regime mark later on. That gives us a plus one. Um, the SPD has this unemployment insurance. Uh, if it was, that would put the unemployment insurance on the three space. That's going to be something that's resolved next turn. And that's going to go away. Uh, the red player has their workers. They place a base. So they're going to place a base in Hamburg. Uh, then they're going to place one red guy into the parliament. Uh, and then the red flag of it here. Let's get rid of that. We don't, we don't want that <laughs> here. Uh, the, the black player just gets a victory point. Great, get a little victory point. So you get a little victory chip that goes face down on your player board. Great. And then uh, the blue player also is going to get one victory point face down on their little uh, thing as well. 
Then we award all this stuff. So pink player gets two victory points for every of their councils on the board. They have one, so they're gonna get two points for that. And they're gonna get uh, two points if there's no regimes, so they don't get those points. SPD is gonna get two points if there is a maximum of two poverty markers anywhere on the board. There's one, two, uh, yeah, there's only two, so great, they get two points. Uh, they would also get two points if there were no regime markers. Well, there is one, so they don't get those points. Blue, you get two points if there's a maximum of two unrest markers. We have one, two, so great, they, uh, they get those points. And they would get two points if there were no councils. Well, there's one, so they don't get those points. And the black player gets one, or two points for every one of their regimes, two points. And they would get two points if there were no councils. So you can see all of the, the victory conditions kind of overlap a little bit, you, it's an, and it's a lot of it's zero sum. Then the person who controls the USDP, which the black player just won, by the way, gets a free reserve. Then the DDP controller, which is down here, this little minor faction, which is controlled by the SPD, I know it's a lot of acronyms in this game, they, get, they can remove one of their bases to make a free roll on the foreign affairs table, which can be very risky. Then the person who controls the DVP, which is controlled by the centralist player in this one, the Centrum, um, can flip over their uh, Gustav Stresemann card, which they may have used. Uh, it's kind of free to get it back every turn. After having done that, all of that stuff, you then resolve uh, the economy marker. So if the economy is at two, you randomly pace out one poverty marker. So you roll 2d6, we roll the four, we consult the table here, Four is Frankfurt. Frankfurt gets a poverty marker. Um, they don't have any markers yet, so they just get a poverty marker. Not great. That helps the, K, the uh, KPD. They, uh, if there's poverty there, that's gonna help them to kind of rabble rouse. Uh, then we're going to, um, uh, I think, so then we're gonna score f for basically territories. So the government player gets one point for every area that is free from orange markers. And a green cancels out an orange in the same space. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if there's a single player who is forming the government, they get six points. Most of the time in this game, you're gonna have a coalition government of two players, they're gonna split those six and get three points each. Then uh, they're going to lose points for every space where there are two orange markers, we don't have that anywhere, uh, but if things are going very poorly, they're gonna start losing uh, uh, points for doing that. Uh, yes, and I, and I think you lose, uh, you don't lose points, you lose seats, that's right. You lose seats, uh, like your influence in the government wanes. Uh, it's very bad if that happens. Then comes one of the, the real worst parts of this is that, uh, so I think you form a government at that point. Did you form a government afterwards? Uh, let's see, parliament, priorities. No, the government comes afterwards. So, okay, cool, I just want to make sure. Da, 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 da. One seat for each city with two. Two government parties lose one seat for each city with two or more. Okay, cool, there weren't any. Okay, cool, I just want to make sure I say, saying that right. Um, but yeah, you can lose seats, that's very bad, don't do that. Uh, then they're gonna roll on the crisis table. Uh, the crisis table is awful. Uh, the crisis table is here. And so what you're gonna do uh, is for each of these threats in the Deutsches Reich above one, so we're just gonna flip this over for the case of this, you're gonna roll a crisis roll for each party in government. So if there's a coalition government, the one party's gonna roll two, two crisis rolls, the other party will also roll two crisis rolls because there are two above one. And let me tell you, for a lot of our game, <laughs> there was like five in here and so you'd make four crisis rolls and it is extremely punishing. So what does a crisis roll look like? Roll 2d6 uh, and you're gonna consult this table. A crisis roll is always 2d6 and you keep the highest. However, if you roll a one or a two, those will also get resolved. Um, these are just my dice that I happen to have. There will be custom dice in this, we believe. So uh, SPD is gonna roll two crisis rolls. So, great. 
So you keep the highest and resolve that. So a five means we lose one base. So a red base comes off the map. However, a one and a two always trigger. We roll the one, that's the worst possible outcome. We lose a victory point. So one of your little victory point markers gets thrown back into the pot. You also lose a seat in government. And you also uh, lose a base as well. So it's like just the worst thing that can happen. That was one of their two rolls. Then they're gonna roll again. And we rolled uh, the exact same thing, incredible. Uh, but the red don't have any bases left on the board. They can lose a seat and they can lose on the victory point. So very, very, very bad, don't do that. Um, at that point, so here, we'll just, we'll take him from the back there just to, that, that helps. So, that, and that now the blue player is gonna do the same thing if they were forming a government, which early game they do, they're gonna roll the same thing. Hey, we rolled a six, which does nothing. And because we didn't roll a one or a two, we only keep the highest. So that was great, good for them. Uh, this one, unfortunately, not good. So they're gonna lose a seat in government and they're gonna lose another seat in government and they're gonna lose a base and they're gonna lose that sweet, sweet victory point that they got earlier from their farmers. <laughs> then, having done that, you would remove an instable state marker and if there was a violent peace marker, you'd remove that as well. This is the kind of the time passes, some of the um, order and stability kind of comes back as, as wounds are a little less fresh. But most of the time, things like blockades and inflation, poverty will stay here and it will continue and compound, can be very, very bad. After having done all of that, you then um, assess the Reichstag. Uh, so what's gonna happen is, is if there's more than 24 uh, people in the government, which there currently are, because all of these are filled up, this is 24 right here, plus there's some extras, um, you, you're gonna add those. So, Everyone who controls a minor faction is gonna add points in. If it's early game, so turns one or two, this provides uh, two KPD ones, but the KPD go don't control them. Uh, the SPD, if they control them, same thing. I guess that can only go between those two players. But uh, that never changed hands in our game, so. For example, the SPD player is gonna get, uh, we're in turn four, they're gonna get one extra guy. Uh, the KPD is gonna get no one because they lost that issue. Uh, the blue player is going to get, it's turn three and four, they're going to get two blue guys in the government as well. And where's the DDP? The DDP is going to get uh, one red guy in here as well. So because there's more than 24 dudes in parliament, we just kind of reshuffle this. So every faction who has 10 or more pieces total removes one piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, uh, 11. So they're gonna remove, uh, they remove three pieces. If you've got seven pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you remove two guys. Uh, if you have uh, four, you lose one, okay. So I think blue is going to lose one because they got one, two, three, four. Uh, and what, what was it? It was, uh, let me make sure, is it five, five or four or more? Up to seven is going to lose one. So I think the, uh, the red player is going to lose just the one as well. If my memory serves me, which I believe that it does. Four plus six, yeah, remove one. So they're just going to lose one. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're going to lose two. Great. So you remove all of those, then you fill these back in, uh, and we just kind of rearrange it so it looks nice. That's just a me thing though, you probably don't need to do all of that. Ooh. So as you can see, <laughs> these things can change fairly drastically um, based on uh, the amount of guys that you have and this looks very different to how it did before. Then the, you're gonna form a government. And so the person who has the most, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, he's the most, they're gonna optionally choose to see if they can ally with someone to form a government. Now, this is where we go back to this opinion track. The black player, you can only ally people who are next to you on the political spectrum. So blue can ally with red or black, but not pink. Red can ally with blue and pink, but not black. 
black can only ally with blue, pink can only ally with red. So if the black player's got the most, they're gonna ask the blue player, hey, if we join forces, we can form a coalition government. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You need to have twelve to form a government. So even even if he joined, we still wouldn't have enough, so it wouldn't matter anyway. Uh, and so what happens is, is that you form a minority cabinet. So we don't have enough real control, and that is a threat to our stability as a nation. That's not good. Um, early game, you can have a big red presence and a big blue presence. They can form a majority government, but as the factions kind of even out, that's going to wane, and it's going to cause national trouble. Uh, and then after that, you're going to kind of move the turn track, add new cards, and you're going to do it all over again. But a lot of moving parts. We didn't even talk about half the stuff in here, but um, that's kind of a look at some of how this game works. So what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at how the game works. Uh, I, Not that I was like, worried but we don't play a lot of euro well, games and, and i know you don't like euro games not we, my every, favorite every time we play one you're always hesitant yeah so we don't play a lot of no, we don't about, we, we don't but this is if i'm gonna play a euro game this is the kind of mm -hmm. game that i like there was a ton of interaction there's mm -hmm. fighting in the streets like there's direct combat there's the all of the manipulating of the bases and, and exchanging controls fighting uh in the opinions in the reichstag you know, and all of the knock-on effects of all of those things. Mm -hmm. I was full of player interaction, and it did not feel dry at all, basically. Well, and I felt on the edge of my seat the entire time. Oh, I mean, we were close yeah. to losing, or someone's close yeah. to losing the whole game, pretty much. Yeah, and it, it just it kept me engaged. Yeah. I, I, I know we all kind of said that at different times. And a game that can do that, and is this style of game, I, I think is really a testament to how it's designed... Yeah. And how it integrates all these parts. And, and we always say, pull this lever and see what happens. Oh, yeah. yep. How many times was that said during this game? Yeah. At least twice. Yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> big change. Um, yeah. and, and it's just interesting to explore those things, to mm -hmm. better understand and build your strategy. This is one of those games, you're going to buy this. It's it's a, a huge game, well produced. You're not Massive gonna, bonks. You're not going to pay yeah. 50 bucks for this, right? No. But this is a game you're going to invest in over years, yep. playing multiple times. You're probably going to get your group together and you're going to play it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. You got to have a lot of time to do it though. That that's the one the one negative I see with this game is it's not a 2 hour game. No, this know? is this is a long game. It, it's a 3 to 6 hour game and and that's fine if you have that time. And the yep. people too with the, and the people right. four players. Yeah, can people commit? But it's going to give back so much when you do play it. I, like I said, I don't even care if I was winning. I was having a good time seeing this unfold well, and i'd love to explore the other factions too and yeah that you can tell just looking at everyone's mats and and even what they were doing on the on yeah. the board that they all play differently they have a different focus you know i'm more about getting a lot of chaos out mm -hmm. um you're more about getting the seats and, and kind of keeping control yeah. um so it's it's interesting to see kind of the strengths and weaknesses of each faction and with all the agendas for each faction i mean you, you're gonna play this quite a bit just to yeah. even see what's what's there yeah and i mean even outside of just your personal deck you get these timeline cards mm -hmm. two yeah. of them every turn so that's adding more to your options possibilities yeah. so there's a lot of ways it can go yeah and you know like with all the layers of this game you draw your timeline cards you get to look at those then you can pick your agenda then you yeah. draw your faction cards and hopefully those support your agenda that you've chosen based on your timeline cards so there's there's a lot of layers and steps as you go through the sequence of play once you kind of, it was that whole first turn was like, okay, yeah, let's just yeah. kind of get through this and see where <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, at. Yeah. And then by the end, you see everything resolved and you're like, ah, ah yeah, okay. I think that's a big turn sense. two. Yeah. It much more informed decisions. You're like, ooh, let's go. And, and I don't care how many times you read the rules, you're, you're not going to see it come together until you actually get to the end of that round. Yes. I, sorry, think, it was, I think it was the, the second turn. I think I had played like the Econ um <laughs> Uh, agenda card for uh, my faction and things just kind of came together and yeah by then once you see the way things kind of come together you form a plan from that and it, mm -hmm. it feels good mm -hmm. after that. yeah so one thing that I will say because people it, do you, will, might complain or they might not know this faction you do have the uh, German Nationalist Party but they are not 
the NSDAP. Mm. The NSDAP are a separate track down here, and you can influence them, uh, but if they uh, fill up their track, everyone loses. Yeah. So, so it's not like someone necessarily has to play the very bad guys. And uh, bonus shame points to whoever put the most in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's literally yeah. It's like, uh, whoever it's, loses, um, if you cause the game to lose, someone loses the most. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and what's neat about the NSDAP is as that track goes up, you get these little brown shirts and they just occupy spaces in the mm -hmm. Reichstag and there ain't nothing you can do about it. And yeah. that was one thing I really enjoyed about the game is you know, the Weimar Republic was famously just like stymied and just couldn't ever get anything done because no one could hold the majority, much like we saw in this game. Uh, so that's why all the crises were happening. I was worried that like, oh, is this going to be very static? Is there going to be anything happening? The, the state of our Reichstag, based oh, on insane. how the setup, it was so fluid and it changed so yeah. much. It was really neat to see that like, oh good, mm -hmm. that there's a... <laughs> There's just a, a big journey in this game. No well, it was kind of like a multicolored wave. I mean, when it started, it's like the red guys here were almost half. I and they're way more than that. Yeah, yeah. you had a lot yeah. more yeah. blue. And then it's like it started to switch, and then around turn two and three, it started to switch back. Yeah. And it that that was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, just the, very just the way it, it changed. And, just and, I, and I, was just, I was happy to cool. see that yeah, there was a lot of change in this, and it wasn't you know kind of a static and... Uh, the game wasn't everyone at loggerheads not moving, not doing mm -hmm. anything. It was just like well, the Wild West out here. It was that which was very, it was very enjoyable to do that. Yeah, I had a blast playing this one. I would play it again. I, I think this is a game that a lot of people are going to like. But you've got to like heavier, more planning oriented Euro type games. games. You're you're not cutting wood and building a, a house or cutting wood and building ships. You're cutting wood here, but it's to build <laughs> yeah. an entire new world, yeah. right? You guys are trying to set it on fire, which makes me laugh yeah. all the time and in some ways. But just a fascinating experience, and I'd love to play it again immediately. Yeah, big game, four players. You're going to play this at your big conventions, mm -hmm. or if you're kind of mm -hmm. hardcore and you do Euro games at a club, this is going to be one of those games so you're going to get to the table fairly regularly. Really enjoyed the theme of it, and I enjoyed playing within this game as well. It, Which was a surprise for myself. Yeah, so I, I assume you guys oh, yeah. very, very enjoyed very similar. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not a much of a Euro player, but I think the theme, the mechanics, seeing how every every faction kind of came together uh, definitely kept my attention the whole time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'd love to get more plays of this in. Yeah, and um, other game from the designer, Watergate. Similarly, mm -hmm. the yeah. theme really comes through with it. In about 30 minutes. It could not be more, could not be more it's, it's, it's on the whole other end of the spectrum, yeah. really. But... <laughs> You, there's definitely similarity in the way the theme comes out mm. and some gameplay nuance as well. So yes, Weimar, the fight for democracy uh, from Capstone Games. You may well be watching this on the Kickstarter, in which case, press that green button. If not, uh, check this out if this is something you're interested in. I appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from PlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant. And I'm Russ. And I'm Jordan. <laughs>